Okay, 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 guys, it's Old Man G here back again with another late, sorry, video for Red Devil Studio. Um, thanks for jo everyone who joined in the, the live stream yesterday. Really appreciate the comments. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe to Red Devil Studio. Smash that notification button and follow us on Twitter. We unite X so this channel can continue to grow and grow and grow. So without further ado, here's basically uh, uh, my uh, latest update regarding to well, the four key players there, because there's been a lot of news around them, and rather than doing separate videos for each one of them, I just thought it would be a good idea to discuss um, all these players individually. So first and foremost, to start with the player on the left, that is Bruno Fernandes. And as you can see, Bruno Fernandes is a bit upset there. So this image is basically from Sporting Lisbon had, a, I think, a friendly, pre-season friendly with Valencia in this week, and basically um, Bruno Fernandes was seen crying, essentially. He was crying. You know, he was in tears. Um, as if almost like, and the suggestion was that this is, it, it, you know, why would Bruno Fernandes be in tears if he was going to stay at Sporting Lisbon? You know, unless, you know, he didn't get his move, that's another reason, I guess. <laughs> but, you know, when you combine that with the fact that on Twitter, apparently there was a sort of an emotional heart, uh, emotional um, Twitter comment where he used some specific emojis, essentially what we're saying is that the impression is that Bruno Nando's feels, you know, that he's going to be leaving the club. You know, otherwise, why would he be so emotional um, playing? It doesn't make sense, you know. So, you know, clapping for the fans, you know, why would he be... Now, it doesn't mean he's coming to Manchester United, but bear in mind that Manchester United seems to be the only club that seems to be linked towards him. There's a strong suspicion that Bruno Fernandes has potentially played his last game for Sporting Lisbon um, and that, you know, Manchester United are potentially working on a deal. Um... There are obviously still, you know, reports from Italy and, Port and Portugal that are saying, oh, a deal has been working on, they've been negotiating, etc., etc. But until really, to be honest, I see a credible um, source like Simon Stone, etc., I'm not going to sort of jump on the bandwagon yet, although I will report the news that these Italian and Portuguese journalists say, and I'll put a link in the description and you can investigate it for yourself. I still think we can't be so heavily linked to a player and there would be absolutely nothing in it. I don't buy it. Um, but if we see the fact that Fernandez obviously seems to be upset um, uh, playing, uh, and also uh, his the combination of his Twitter Twitter response, I know I'm clutching on straws here. Only eight, ten days up into go with the transfer window left. But the point I'm trying to make is that fingers crossed, United can get this transfer transfer through. But you know the player seems to be showing, you know, expression that he's not going to be at Sporting Lisbon for much longer. So that should give. Hopefully, Manchester United fans some encouragement. Okay, so moving on to the middleman. This is Harry Maguire. Harry Maguire, okay. So basically, um, again, Leicester City also playing a friendly. Um, and it was reported that Harry Maguire was, was not involved in teams, not involved in the squad. Um, then, it comes out, then it comes out, I think it's Ben Chill, where I think the comments basically, it was speculation basically, that, oh, he's not in the squad, just like Sporting Lisbon, or maybe he's trying to force a move, blah, 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 blah. Um, there's speculation, you know, that the reason why he, he didn't basically, um, uh, well, Ben Shaw basically comes on and says, listen, Harry Maguire ha had, was ill. That's why he wasn't, you know, in the squad. So, um, you know, don't, 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 don't read much into it. You know, what's, what, what's the deal? Um, that said, what's happening now is, you know, um, again, reports, most from UK press and newspaper are, are that, once again, United are close and signing Harry Maguire, you know, so that Harry Maguire is close. Um, there is, you know, talk in the Daily Mirror, Metro, etc., you know, that Manchester United uh, essentially coming again, um, bidding in excess of 70, 75 million for Harry, Harry Maguire to basically try and um, get him. And now, as we've obviously said in this channel, with Eric Bailly being injured now, you know, that puts more pressure on Manchester United to actually sign a centre-back, I think. And the paper talk is suggests that, um, if anything, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is going to prioritise a centre-back now more so. Um, they, we were always prioritising centre-back, but now that Eric Bailly is now injured, even more so a, cent a centre-back. So, Maguire, clearly, according is, is pushing for a move. Um, and according to the uh, press, in the UK press specifically, um, the deal is close. It's close to be signing. Again, take this with what you will. You know, links in the description. Um, we do need to centre back. We have ten days. You know, if we're gonna pay, if we're going to pay um, 
for uh, Harry Maguire, it's it's going to be 75 between 75 to 80 million, um, and we're going to be desperate. That's that's what that's what's going to happen. Um, so we will basically see what happens. Um, but watch this space um, because according to the press, certainly according to um, UK UK press, um, this deal is in its in its in quote final stages. But you know we will see. This has been going on for most of the trans window, so we will see. But that's what the latest news on how Maguire is, guys. Number of top, Milinkovic Savage. So, obviously, with, as we pause in previous videos, this whole thing of Milinkovic Savage and I, I put it in small just because I feel that um, I'm still not sure about the story. Um, because the only thing is that um, the Lazio president has come out and basically said that, you know, Lazio opened to selling him. He's not really going to be a player anymore, blah, 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 you know, so, you know, the Lazio president is certainly not mean, meaning to retain Milinkovic Savage. The issue that I have, you know, okay, other reports are saying, you know, that his agent is now in London to see a Manchester United deal, uh, which is, again, is according to Italian press, who seem to be very, very increasingly unreliable, I would say, in, the, in this transfer window. Um, but to be honest, my issue thing with the, this whole deal um, is just basically just that it just doesn't make sense that, um, you know, we, as I've said before, that we can only do the deal if Pogba goes. Because if Real Madrid, if Real Madrid, when our transfer window closes, lobby a bid for 150, 160 million pounds for Pogba, he's gone anyway. And we don't have anyone to replace him. So we have to, so we can't, we can't wait till that. We have to sign him, and then once it, once we sign him, then if Papa goes, not form stays, not, that's a different. And to be honest, they're different players, so they can play together, can work. But the point I'm trying to make is that, you know, increasingly, to be honest, I just think that this is this is being with itself just paper talk. Um, I really do, um, because I just think that most of the reports come from Italy. No one really um, credible in the UK has really mentioned Linkfit Savage aside from you know UK press citing people in Italy. Um, and it just seems weird that we would go for, we would wait, or this deal is dependent on Paul Pogba leaving when the transfer window for England closes some two, three weeks, because the Spanish La Liga transfer window closes at the end of August. Ours closes essentially at the beginning of August. So the difference of three weeks. So in three weeks, which is plenty of time for Real Madrid, they can potentially sign Paul Pogba no problem. And that, and that is a problem, a very, very big problem. So we need to sign a replacement if we anticipate Pogba goes. And that leads me to the last man, Romelu Lukaku. So Romelu Lukaku, um, obviously he's, he's a United player, but for how much longer, we don't know. Um, two things of note, really, the big, big things. The one, um, his recent Instagram post, where he basically was his Instagram post of him and his agent. And basically, it's sort of saying, you know... Um, it ends up to be continued. You know, I implying that, you know, they're pushing for a move. Of course they're pushing for a move. That's what's happening. Sorry, thirsty there. Drinking. Um, so they're pushing for a move. And then on top of that, Lukaku has basically been left out of the of the squad going to play the friendly in Norway. Um, yes, okay, it's been in Norway, but... He's not part of that squad. He's not really been part of the preseason, to be honest. And I can't believe that he's ridiculously injured. So I think they're trying to, they're trying, they're basically trying to sort out a deal, sort out a move, trying to sort something out. Um, and United are letting him do that. And um, the only thing is that United are not lowering his asking price. And the report said Lukaku is frustrated with that. But he's hoping we'll see. You know, um, I've always had my opinion, my car, my car, that yes. Maybe doesn't fit Manchester United, but he did score goals. And my problem is that if we do sell Lukaku, we're not rumoured to be replacing with anybody. And we're just going to be relying on Rashford, Martial, maybe Greenwoods, etc. To, to do something. And I just think it's wrong for us to rely on youth, young players basically, when they need a bit of experience to help them with the goals. We've had experienced strikers. You know, you know, you know in the last couple... Okay, yes, Zlatan lost plays, yes... Karku's not first touch, but we've had experienced strikers scoring goals for United. That's what we've been doing. Um, to then suddenly rely on the youth, I, I don't think is right. Um, and to be honest, Marshall Rashford last season 
didn't score that many goals, you know. So it's going to be a big season for them. They're going to have to really, really, really step up because we haven't really bought 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 support. And sign up from Daniel James, um, and even he's young. You know, we're really going to have to. We really, we really could potentially struggle. Um, so yeah, so Lukaku fine, okay. If he gets moved to Inter or Juventus, apparently, and that's another thing that was mentioned. Juventus the Bala switch, which we we talked about yesterday, and I which I don't which I think is just balls, but there we go. But Lukaku goes. I still think we need to replace him. I just don't think we have enough time to sign a replacement for Lukaku, Bruno Fernandez, Harry Maguire, and replace him with Savage all in a space of ten days. Guys, realistically, that is just not going to happen. Thanks for listening, guys. Please like, share, and subscribe again to Red Devil Studio. Smash that notification button to get the latest news from this channel. Follow us on Twitter, We Are United X. Have a nice evening, guys, and cheers.